Hey, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to show you some scroll art that resembles intarsia. If you're an intarsia expert, you're going to disagree that it has anything to do with it, but I couldn't find a better name for it. So that's what I'm going to call it. I printed out two copies of the pattern. One is for now, one is for later. You'll find out why later. Next, you want three boards approximately the same thickness. They don't have to be exactly on, but you do want them the same size out around the edges. And you want your tape to put the boards together and the glue to apply your pattern. For later, we'll need some glue, something to spread the glue, some wax or parchment paper. And while we're cutting out the piece, We'll want something to transport the pieces from the scroll saw back to the assembling area. Also, as mentioned before, you'll need a scroll saw and some way to sand it. A belt sander or sandpaper will work. Belt sander is a lot quicker. First, let's wrap these in tape. Make sure to wrap in both directions so the wood doesn't slide either way. Next we're going to apply the pattern to the wood. Okay, now we're ready to start cutting it out on the scroll saw. Uh, you want to make sure that your blade is at 90 degrees. I'm not going to show you how to adjust that. Each saw is a little bit different. Um, you want to make sure to have some tape to secure the pattern if it comes loose. And again, an area to assemble it off to the side. Otherwise, you're left with a bunch of uh, small pieces that you're going to have to put together like a puzzle. The other pattern will help with that if it comes to that, but it's easier to just keep it assembled. I do stop through this process quite a few times just to make sure my blade stays tight. Supervisor supervising. Am I doing it right? Sometimes the supervisor gets a little too involved in my work. Okay, the tape is off and I fixed my issue with the oak. There was a weak spot that went through the outside border of the bottom of the wing and the body itself. I glued those back together and we should be able to sand those out in the final product. Now it's time to mix things up and see what we come up with.
Now it's time to glue it all together. I could have done that as I was going along, but I was switching pieces back and forth to see which pattern I liked better. Okay, with all the parts glued in place, now we let the glue dry and then on to the sanding. All right, looks like the glue is set. Beautiful, right? No, but we're gonna fix that. The next thing we're gonna do is take this over to the sander and make it flat, then on to the finishing touches. Now that they all have flat surfaces, I'm going to fill in the cracks with glue and then I'm going to immediately hit them with a belt sander again and the dust and the glue combined will act like a wood filler. starting to look pretty good now we're going to flip them and repeat the process if you have something you're going to put against the wall you don't have to do this piece all the cracks are filled i'm going to use some wipe on polyurethane to finish it up and then we'll hang them If you missed any glue spots while you were sanding, you'll find them real quick in this process. Fix that, all you have to do is go back to the sander, sand everything off, and then reapply the finish. polyurethane dry I'm going to use a finger drill and drill some pilot holes and put in some eye screws and hang them up.
So that's my video. Like I said, I consider it a form of intarsia. If it's something you've already been doing for a while and you know a different name for it, leave it below in the comments. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe, and I hope to see you next time.